In this video, I want to show you how we can pick up and play our guitars in all the common guitar keys. To do that, we're going to be using this Noisy Clan decoder, which shows all the common chords in every key, starting off with the easier ones and then going to ones with more sharps and flats. But first of all, let me give you some song examples, starting off with the most guitar-friendly key of G major. This is guitar-friendly because the 1, 4 and 5 are G major, C major, and D major, and some song examples include Brown Eyed Girl, We have Love Me Do by the Beatles, Someone to love, someone like you, and Good Riddance by Green Day, which I'll demo just with basic open chords G, C and D. And using this decoder, we can see that G is in the middle, so that's the key. These are the four and the five chords in this key, so C and D major. But we can also see the other common chords in this key, which are A minor, E minor, and B minor. And we can also see that there's one sharp in this key, which is an F sharp. And that's actually the definitive thing of the key of G. It's quite incidental that these chords all happen in this key. The actual reason something's in the key of G major, or in fact in the key of C, C has no sharps and flats, because all these chords and any melodies and how this would be written in traditional notation would have no sharps and flats. And in the key of G, the D major has an F sharp in it, and that's what actually defines this key. But that's not too useful as a beginner guitarist or an intermediate player, just wanting to pick up and play. What is, is having all these chords written down for you so you can just pick up your guitar, maybe use a looper, and go G major to D major. Then I'll go A minor and C major and then hit my looper and that's going around from G to D to A minor and then to C and then it could play any G major scale melody For example, and essentially, you can choose any chord in any order that you see laid in front of you here, G, D, A minor, E minor. Play, in this case, the G major scale over the top of that, or the G major pentatonic, and that's always going to work. Noisy Clan also offer this decoder showing more of the circle of fifths at a time, which is a fantastic learning tool alongside all these other great products. Get 15% off any order from Noisy Clan with the promo code ANDY15, link in description. But the way we can be a little bit more intelligent or a bit more informed about those chord choices are using song examples and trying to do what those songs do, recreate it ourselves, and then even break those rules that these songs teach us. So let's have a look at a few of those. A three chord song that just introduces a little bit of tension with the minor chord, in this case A minor. What's up by Four Non Blondes? Knocking on Heaven's Door by Bob Dylan does something very similar by also introducing that A minor. And then G, D, C. Closing Time by Semisonic does a very similar thing. those songs you can hear have a slightly melancholic tone but they're mainly sticking to the one four five and just introducing that a minor just for a little bit of sadness in there a little bit of melancholy but then back to the positive major key because they're in g major wish you were here by pink floyd is another great example of this using all these chords we've covered so far in the key of g if we take the verse for example so so you think you can tell 
C major to D major, melancholy of the A minor chord, heaven from hell, blue skies from pain. Live Forever by Oasis does a similar thing as well. I don't really want to know how your garden grows, cause I just want to fly. Notice all those songs have a similar emotion to them, like the core emotions behind the lyrics, behind the music, and that's influenced by these chord choices. The songwriters know about this when they're creating the song and they choose their chords accordingly to match the lyrics and vice versa. Now what this decoder also shows really well is the relative major and minor key. So G major has a relative minor key of E minor, which is the one directly below it, and that means it has the same key signature and the same chords, and it's having the same chords but mainly staying away from the one chord or the major key of G and mainly focusing, so starting and finishing a chord progression on the E minor, which kind of puts it in that key as opposed to a major key. Again, best way to learn this in practice, song examples. Let me know your favorite song examples in both the key of G major and E minor uh, in the description below. These are the ones I think are really worth learning and memorizing. Zombie by the Cranberries, which again, I'll just demo with basic chords, no sus chords or nothing crazy, just the basic form of E minor, C, G, and D major. Disarm by the Smashing Pumpkins. Behind Blue Eyes by The Who. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man. Behind Blue Eyes. So clearly in the key of E minor, but we do have an A major there, and that's just a borrowed chord from another key, or a chord that uses an accidental, which is just uh, a sharp or a flat added where in the key it would be a natural. All it means is we're just using another chord there to add a bit of spice to it, but then straight away returning to the other chords that are listed on this. But it's important to note that even though it breaks music theory and it breaks what's shown here, any of these minors can be a major in our chord progression, but we shouldn't change them all to majors and we shouldn't change these to minors. We only try and add that spice on one chord Maximum of two is what the songs tell us. That's a great example of that, as is something like Wonderwall. Which, E minor seven, G major, D sus four, all of those, the D sus four is neither major or minor, but none of those are same minor where it should have been a major or vice versa. The A seven sus four, even though it's not a minor or a major technically, it's given a little bit of a major vibe. There's a little bit of an uplift in that chord. That's just another example where these are just the basic options and they can always be embellished. And I feel like that's an important point. Any I've missed, let me know in the comments below, but we're gonna move on now to the key of C major. The key of C major is the most popular key for piano songs because it would simply be using all the white keys on a piano and mainly not playing the sharps and flats, the black keys. But we can of course play all of those songs on acoustic as well and they often get transferred later in the songwriting process. So classic song examples in the key of C major which use C, F, G, A minor, they're like a basic four chords. And this one would be Let It Be. And those notes there are just from the C major scale as we discussed that works. A song with the same chord progression is No Woman No Cry. Another three chord one. La Bamba. Which is also essentially twist and shout. Another four chord example will be Learning to Fly by Tom Petty.
And there's a couple of Oasis songs you should really learn if you're wanting to expand on what other chords, more interesting chords, uh, can be added to the key of C major, maybe ones that aren't on this list, turning some of these to major chords. Most popular example, probably Don't Look Back in Anger. Starts off like Let It Be, but then we have E major. Along with all the common chords in this key. Uh, Noel Gallagher probably got that trick from Imagine, I'd Im I would imagine. Kind of the bridge, but I'm not the only one. That E major there, E7, just adding some color to the 145 in that key. Finally, Half the World Away is a great one. Adding not only some slash chords, sus twos, sus fours, seventh chords, but one of the most Melancholic chord changes we can play on guitar, which is the four chord, the F, to the minor version of this chord, F minor, back to the one. So I start a revolution from my bed. Instant melancholy, and that is there in any key that you would go from the four to the minor version of this four to the one. That would be the same with G major, so G major. C major, C minor, and G has that same melancholic sound, and you can just keep going. Uh, so we're now in the key of D major, and we would play G, G minor, and D, and therefore I can still kind of sing. So we start a revolution from my bed. In many ways, every key sounds exactly the same relative to the one chord, and that's why we number these one, four, five, just proportionate to the major scale, just turning the major scale into major and minor chords. And we can do the same relative major minor trick in the key of C, using these same chords, the relative minor to C major is A minor, because it's directly below. And then we have A minor, F, C, and G to create, you know, the four chords song, the axis of awesome idea. But we're actually putting the theory behind this to be able to do this in every key, rather than just putting all the songs we know into the same key, which is what they did to make that video. In this case, using this decoder, we can put these into the original key in songs such as um, Other Side by Red Hot Chili Peppers, how long, how long last night? Safe Tonight by Eagle Eyed Cherry. Losing My Religion. And don't fear the reaper. Again, some guitar classics use those chords, but then add others to it that aren't strictly in this key, but all they're gonna do is turn any of these minor chords into major. That's typically the only trick people are using. That would give us, for example, House of the Rising Sun, A minor. C major, those are both on this list, but D major turns that six into a major, and then F is here. Uh, the other one would be A minor to E major, which again just turns the E minor into an E major to add a bit of spice. Let's continue now and go for songs in the key of D major. So this is our one, four, and five. And then our minor chords, three chord songs in the key of D major include Twist and Shout in its original key of D major, Bad Moon Rising, a four chord song would be Every Day by Buddy Holly. Every day. It's a getting closer, going faster than a roller coaster. Adding more chords to this, but still in the no capo key of D major. We have Here Comes Your Man by the Pixies.
Mm. Little by little by Oasis. Little by little, we give you everything you ever dreamed of. Little by little. And many famous songs in the key of D major, but capo key of D. So, for example, capo third fret in the key of D major actually sounds like an F chord, but for us, we can just use all these same chords. We can use D, G, G, D, A, and it's an A sus4 to play the riff proper. Another guitar classic in the capo key of D major but with a capo at the seventh fret, is Here Comes the Sun. That's essentially a D major chord, G major, and then an A. D, here comes the sun. G, here comes the sun. E7, that's a major chord, that's just turning this E minor into major. We'll add a bit of spice, but nothing more tricky than that. As we continue moving around the circle of fifths, we then get to the key of A major. Having A major, D major, and E major as our one, four, five. Songs such as Wild Thing. And plenty of other songs that use all the all the chords in this key. But the other thing you've got to remember with any songs that were written on guitar is that guitarists are kind of lazy and we like to use open strings and open chords as much as possible, not only because we're lazy, because it sounds great. There's actually a complex bit of music theory happening there, which is sticking to the one, four, and five in the key of A major. This would be A major, D major, and E major which is addressing <laughs> the elephant in the room in this video, which is the G-sharp diminished chord, or the fact that from a music theory point of view, the seventh chord, as opposed to the other six, one, two, three, four, five, six, is theory-wise a diminished chord, and that's never often played. For example, G-sharp diminished to A major gives that perfect kind of resolve. but it doesn't crop up in many chords. Far more common is just the closest thing to a G sharp, which is a G. Songs that use A, G, and D are plentiful in guitar land. We got Get Back by the Beatles. Uh, you've got Highway to Hell, however you want to play it. And countless other rock songs which I'm sure you're familiar with if you've been playing guitar a long time, but that G chord doesn't crop up on here. And that's why it can be handy to have the slightly more complex version of this uh, cheat sheet, this little decoder, which has these extra chord symbols on them, which are giving us, they're basically just still going around the circle of fifths. The note or the chord, which is a whole step down from the one chord, which is how rock songs or blues based songs are often played, and that's how they deal with this uh, diminished chord. They don't play the diminished, they play this one. So, those are just the really obvious examples of how to use these decoders and pick up your guitar and just play and do what these songs are doing but with a little bit more thought actually than just playing any random chord from here, paying a little bit of attention from the emotion that the song's going for, that the songwriter was trying to convey with his chord progression, by using song examples and pinpointing that to common things that happen in any key here. This is an affiliate link, so I do get a kickback from any purchases that are made. If you go ahead and purchase these products, that is a great way of supporting my Andy Guitar YouTube channel and these free videos. Any questions you have about all the topics brought up in this video, let me know below. I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. If there's anything I haven't made a video on yet, you can be sure I'll make that in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Noisy Clan for sponsoring this video. And I hope to see you next time, guys. Bye bye.